Uh, my piece actually was, uh, I was asked to write this piece based on a conversation uh, with the editor of the um, Independent. And as I was writing the piece, I brought it into the class because I was in Pentails. And through the process, unfortunately, uh, through the editing process at the Independent, <laughs> much of my original piece <laughs> Uh, cut, although you're welcome to have copies of it. It's, it's a good journalistic piece. But today was an opportunity to kind of try to bring back some of the original piece that was in the class. So that's what I'm going to do. So I dedicate it to the sojourners, the volunteers from Riverside Church who go to the Elizabeth Detention Center uh, to a volunteer to work with immigrants there. Reflections on time lost in a parallel universe. Just look at the windowless warehouse, how it hides the sky. The long windowless one-story warehouse blends in an industrial zone filled with similar walk-in containers. But this building is not storing things. It is storing living, breathing human beings who yearn to return to their families and friends to be free. In our hectic world, we complain about being late for work, for a date, for an appointment, because we were detained on the train, in traffic, in a checkout line. So we are detainees in our daily lives, losing a little time here, a little time there. Sometimes, when involuntarily detained in the plane on the tarmac for hours, we cry foul and expect <coughs> compensation, and we usually get it. To be detained does not sound half bad, and it certainly sounds better than to be incarcerated. That's for criminals. As I head inside the Elizabeth, New Jersey Detention Center, I see mothers pushing babies in strollers to visit their fathers before they are deported. Once inside, I present the number of the detainee who has requested a visitor. I turn over my ID and wait. Then empty-handed, I go through the security check, stepping inside the lockup room. The sound of the heavy door that clanks shut behind me makes it clear this is undeniably a prison. For a few moments, I stand between two worlds unable to escape. The door on the other side opens and I step into the visitor's room. It's organized into booths separating visitors from detainees by a ubiquitous plexiglass barrier that wraps around the room. A chair and a phone mirror each other on both sides of the barrier. I sit down and pick up the phone on my side. Across from me, the statuesque 19-year-old college student from Africa takes up her phone. She's so happy to have a visitor. She has been detained for two months, waiting for her community college visa to come through. I try not to reveal my shock. She seems so young to be incarcerated and for no good reason. What keeps you going, I ask. I know that God put me here to protect me from something really horrible on the outside, she replies. Take a deep breath. I'm glad that your faith sustains you, I say. I'm a Muslim, but I also learned about Christianity when I was in school, she continues, telling me she loves to read, and her favorite novel is Silas Marner by George Eliot, the story of an outsider forced to flee his community after being falsely accused of a crime. I come as a friend to listen, and it is impossible to forget the stories I hear. A grandfather in his 50s chats on the phone through the heavy plexiglass barrier. He's neatly shaven with gray hair, like the other detainees, his clothes have been taken away, and he is forced to wear two-piece hospital-like scrubs. A plastic bracelet on his wrist identifies him by photo and number. We talk about his favorite foods. He has been a successful restaurant owner in the U.S. since getting his green card 25 years ago. He has created jobs, paid taxes, and supported the economy. Every so often over the years, he goes back to his home country to visit family and friends, Unfortunately, his homeland is now racked by political violence. So, green card notwithstanding, he was recently detained at Kennedy Airport. A look of confusion, disappointment, and dismay spreads across his kindly face as he describes the ordeal. I am not a criminal, he says. I keep listening. His pain is evident. How are things going for you here, I ask. Suddenly, through the glass, I see the tears stream down his face. I want to reach out to reassure him it's okay to cry. No, it's, I spoke with my family this morning and they asked me how I was. I told them not to worry, that everything was fine. But everything is not fine. It's my diabetes, my feet are burning in my eyes, my vision is bad. They give me pills, but they won't give me my insulin. 
I tell him I'll pass on his message to others who may be able to help. Just look at the windowless warehouse, how it hides the sky. A West Indian man with a broad smile tells me he is full of hope. He has been working hard for 20 years contributing to the American dream. He found a niche as a detailer cleaning cars and works with integrity and grit. His friends pooled their funds to hire a lawyer, but the lawyer never comes. He does not know the lawyer's name. I ask how he spends his days. He's a peacemaker of sorts. There are so many troubled souls inside. Some take the restrictive conditions badly. He lives in a room that holds as many as 44 single beds. The detainees eat, sleep, shower, and use the toilet in the same room without any privacy or respect for their various cultural norms and prohibitions. Their lives are no longer their own. He tells me he reaches out to the ones in pain. He tries to intervene to soothe the anger, to help make the living easier. You have found a calling here, a purpose, I say. Then reluctantly I leave. Our hands touch against the glass to say goodbye. Henry David Thoreau once said, it takes two to speak the truth, one to speak and another to hear. I'm a visitor. I come as a friend to listen and sometimes bring a message beyond the walls. My heart aches for my new friends inside. I want to be proud to be an American, but who can be proud of a broken system that creates a parallel universe to repress and dehumanize ordinary people? These are our friends, neighbors, and coworkers who are being deprived of their most basic freedoms for no good reason. They are ready to share their stories, if only we will listen. Look at the windowless warehouse, how it hides the sky.